Uh, hi, this is Sayed, and uh, here we are going to discuss about identity and access management. Why identity access management is necessary? Why it is necessary as a separate entity or a separate department or a vertical in an IT infrastructure? What happens if we do not have an identity access management separately for an enterprise organization? And um, what are the different tools available in the market and uh, the one that we are going to discuss about is Okta. So, um, okay, so as as we would be having an agenda or uh, what do you call the discussion for today would be, what are the different trends that we have saw in infrastructure from late, from the early 2000 and to the one that we have right now what is the impact of having an identity access management or why is what is the need of it the different modules that it covers like services federation service and single sign-on provisioning and what are the scopes for uh, any asp uh, aspiring I am engineer <clears throat> so the first uh, we have to understand about the infrastructure of uh, the current scenario. Um, so we had earlier most of the infrastructures in IT industry were based on on-prem or the entire system. And uh, with the advent of cloud, all these modules have been all all the sh we found a drastic shift from the on-prem uh, infrastructure to the cloud though it had its own uh, advantages uh, it blew up a lot of companies came into picture um, that they initially did not have to uh, worry about the infrastructure as uh, they can just go plug and play with any infra cloud service providers uh, that we have in the market and start you know, selling out their product or services to their clients and uh, ultimately, uh, there were a few challenges that came across with um, the cloud trends that we have. Now, we are going to see that and how we are going to differentiate with this um, identity necessity. So the first trend, as we said, that there was a change in the IT infrastructure. There was a shift from most of the on-prem devices or on-prem servers or infra IT infra devices to cloud and uh, most of them were going for a very uh, what do you call a, a cost effective uh, solution that was uh, promised by cloud and uh, that is uh, one of its USB so earlier before with, without having a cloud we had uh, anyone who was accessing the uh, shared resources from the company outside the network had to go through this kind of feature wherein they can access those devices or these resources outside the network with along with um, a firewall connected to a VPN. Now with the advent to cloud they don't have to worry about that the, we have uh, the concept of bring your own device and people can just log on to the application just like they are log on to their email all they need is uh, a safe internet browser and uh, an internet connection and that should uh, if, if the right admin access is available for these users they should be able to log in and access the applications or SaaS applications that they are famously called sales uh, software as a service so once the migration was done we found the decentralized administration so with the entire or the infra on-prem infrastructure we already had administration staff in place these administration staff are specific to specific applications and specific departments henceforth we had the overhead on the IT administration but with advent of cloud we got decentralized administration how because with the advent of cloud, we've had a lot of 
CRMs, ERPs and mobile apps coming into picture as they do not have uh, to worry about the IT infrastructure in the beginning of setting up the applications. So with more number of applications in the infrastructure, let's say a particular enterprise has uh, 15 to 20 applications, we cannot go about having 15 to 20 departments managing those apps. And if there is a separate two to three different um, specific app administrative teams, the overhead of the task and managing the requests and uh, the incidents along with would be difficult. So the problem was, though we have a cloud solution available, and if there are a lot many of uh, cloud applications, ultimately more number of users and so is the issue with access. Ultimately, that would be impacting how we can deliver a secure and more convenient access uh, solution to these end users who are accessing the application. Now, one of these reports uh, that we have from Medium, it's one of the uh, IT uh, articles posting website or, or uh, it showed that uh, in the late 2019 we had a you no know, uh, we had a, a, a theft or identity theft for most of the I think this would be more related to um, you know, stores and uh, um, you know, cafes etc a lot of breaches happen with their devices and most of them when they digged out found that it happened due to identity theft meaning that most of them were related for users mistake user not remembering the passwords or user not uh, storing the passwords in the cookies or doing n number of uh, things most of these occurred due to uh, the user not being able to manage their application properly now <clears throat> talking about identity securing I mean, we already come across this identity identity um, uh, secure uh, secure option in our day-to-day -day life uh, one of the examples would be our bank transactions that we do on a regular day uh, we ideally would get the authentication from the uh, trust trustee of the bank asking us to verify if we are the correct person by asking us either by uh, sending out an OTP and in our uh, phones or devices that we use, we have biometric uh, um, uh, fingerprints that would uh, uh, recognize our uh, bioprint or the voice and a screen lock that we see on our, on our phone. So all these are part of the authentication, meaning that you are the person who is authorized to access the device or the uh, you are able, uh, the one you are uh, making the transaction. So basically authentication is nothing but to identify who the person is and that can be done by various means. Um, the various means are available as employees, uh, sorry, the various means are actually being uh, you know, conversed in a digital identity and that's how that digital identity is identified as authentic one by, uh, by either a biometric or an OTP or etc. Now, device management, as we already spoke about that, this was in regards to bring your own device, meaning that if someone is bringing their own device, uh, we still do not have the trace of uh, what device would carry, you know, uh, the, uh, in terms of uh, uh, what, what malicious content it may carry while accessing the application. Um, so that's one of the constraint. So how we can make those devices place safe when they are accessing our resources in an enterprise company. So this all revolves around identity and access management. So let's say if they have uh, increased number of applications and increased number of um, you know, uh, application services and users, we would be able to resolve that app management issue or app uh, provisioning and access issue 
by introducing identity and access system what it does is it identifies the users based on their roles and it segregates them based on the duties that is aligned to you that user in your company and uh, and they will uh, either create group and different policies etc and it would allow them to access these applications within a secure environment so if, if you see this uh, structure on the screen right now, it talks about what identity and access management all revolves around is. On the left side of it, it has the identity part, meaning it all deals with the people. And on the right, it talks about access management and what are the different protocols that it encompasses to provide access to these identities. So here's one of the generic uh, uh, architecture that involves Okta as an identity and access management. Uh, if you guys are already aware of uh, Okta is one of a popular identity access management tool. And uh, this infrastructure talks about how the remote users and the local users both are accessing the application through Okta. Okta being a centralized customer identity and workforce identity management and um, it also allows people coming from the internet accessing the applications from the network. Now this can be presumed to be a hotel network which has few applications on-prem and uh, they have some local staff available and they have uh, people who are accessing it remotely they could be the stakeholders or any uh, st um, you know, staff member as well. And there are people who are coming from the internet wanting to book their hotel for, uh, for the vacation and check if uh, the hotels are available or not. So this, this infrastructure or setup uh, all could be handled by uh, all the identities in this particular infrastructure example given is uh, is can uh, and can be handled by Okta alone that means it, it will have a centralized identity system and that can be easily managed by the company's network uh, admin so here is, uh, here is one of the uh, other few uh, use case of an identity how exactly an identity can be consumed in a system um, Identities could be from different systems or source systems like from my Active Directory, LDAP or CSV and they are consumed through Okta into various uh, target applications like Salesforce, AWS or other HR tools and these transformation is differentiated by Okta based on the profile identity given that is application profile or directory profile or octa profile so in a short uh, identity access is the discipline that uh, would enable the right candidates or right individuals to access the resources of the right one based on their titles and designation allotted at the right time for the right reasons